Good morning, actually good afternoon, everybody. How are you? I am so excited to be here today. My name is Erin Walters and I am a registered dietitian. I am also a group fitness instructor at the YMCA and Family Wellness of Fargo-Moorhead, Fargo our um, Cass and Clay County. So anyway, I'm super excited to come on today and answer your questions about nutrition. So I see we've got quite a few questions that came in, which is awesome. So I am just going to start. Um, first of all, I just want to start by saying I'm so glad that the Y and Family Wellness are offering this opportunities to our members because it is such a tough time. I mean, like physically, emotionally, mentally, I think we're all just a little stir crazy. Um, as you can see, I am not in Fargo, but I'm still isolated. There's still nothing to do. I'm still having to really find ways to maintain my healthy goals and, you know, keep adding some sort of normalcy to this completely abnormal situation we're all in. So, um, going through the questions, there are some great ones and I am going to get started. Feel free if you are watching to just, you know, post any comments, questions, anything like that. I will answer them as quick and as best as I can. So, um, the first question I have here is from Catherine and she says that all this time indoors is making her feel lazy and what are some healthy high energy snacks to keep her going through the day? I feel you, Catherine. Um, it is really easy to get out of routine when your routine is taken away from you. It takes us a long time to build, you know, habits, especially healthy ones. And when life as we know it just is completely changed, it's so easy to just kind of let everything go, lose that energy. When we do nothing, then we feel like doing nothing and it's just a vicious circle. So that is a really good question. Um, the first thing I wanna say is remember that food is fuel and we do need to eat. We do need to nourish our bodies. Um, the best food for energy is gonna be your carbohydrate sources. So if you can make about 50% of your diet carbohydrate based, and then really add a variety to that. So you want your complex carbohydrates, your whole grains, your starchy vegetables, and you can combine it with a little bit of simple carbohydrate, like <laughs> food is fun, um, uh, fruit and milk sugar, and making a combination of those is really what's gonna give us energy. So if we were to have just something really high sugar and high fat, we're gonna get a little burst of energy and then we're gonna feel kind of lethargic. So the best thing to do is to balance it out. So by taking a complex carbohydrate snack, so maybe some whole grain crackers, and then balance it out with a little bit of protein and a little bit of fat. So maybe some string cheese or some peanut butter. And then, um, you know, topping it off with maybe a little bit of fruit. So if you were to take like some wheat thins, spread a little bit of peanut butter on it and put some apple slices on top of that, that's gonna check all those boxes. You're gonna get some fiber, you're gonna get some, some protein, some of that healthy fat, and you're gonna get some energy and it's gonna make you feel full, but not in a lethargic kind of a way. So another option would be like, the good old fashioned, you know, celery stick with a little bit of, you know, not cheese whiz, but maybe some, you know, cheddar cheese slices and some raisins. So really just kind of taking um, little bits of that, you know, that macronutrient wheel and compiling them together for some fun snacks. And these are, there's great creative ways that you can do this. You could do smoothies, you could do wraps, you could do little, um, you know, like little fruit tarts or little veggie tarts, little veggie cups. Okay, what would you recommend diet nutrition wise for someone who wants to maintain performance levels in the weight room? Oh, I gotta keep reading here. But is also looking to lose weight. Okay, Chance, I will get to that in just one minute because there have been similar questions to that. Um, so a lot of people that I have been working with before this 
zombie apocalypse <laughs> happened, um, we're training for the Fargo Marathon. And so I worked with a lot of clients on how to um, eat right while maintaining their training and lose body fat but not lose muscle mass. So it's really a big puzzle. And you know, a lot of it, it, it comes down to macronutrient ratios. So to break it down in the most simple way, macronutrients, right? The three elements of our food that contain calories. You have carbohydrates, you have fat, and you have protein. Those are the only three elements of food that actually contain calories. Um, now your micronutrients, your vitamins, your minerals, things like that. I don't know what just happened there, but hopefully everyone's okay. Um, those don't have those things. So when we say macronutrients, we're looking at um, those calorie containing elements. So carbohydrates get a bad rap because people are like, oh, low carb, low carb, low carb. But if you are performance based, if you are an athlete, if you are training, if you are physically active, carbohydrates, that's the premium fuel. That's what your body wants for energy. You take those away and your body has to resort to other sources that aren't going to be as efficient. That's where something like the ketogenic diet would enter in. Not a long term, um, you know, not long term for performance, not long term for weight loss. You know, that's a whole nother live video feed we could do. But with those macronutrients, you want to Figure out how many calories you know you kind of need in a day, and then make half of those carbohydrate based. And then protein and fat are going to make up the other half. So about 25% protein, 25% fat. And you want to make sure that you're fueling yourself efficiently. So if you have a hard strength training day, have a little bit more protein, but make sure that you take in enough carbohydrates so that you're not using that protein for energy you're using it to build muscle so um, if you have a long run day then you're gonna want a little more complex carbohydrate because you need that fuel to keep you going so it, your energy stores don't have to come from that muscle glycogen and break that down I, it's, I know it's a little bit confusing but it, there's a whole science around um, sports nutrition so when it comes to maintaining strength gains fueling your performance but losing body fat I really recommend starting with that macronutrient wheel making 50% of your carbohydrates or 50% of your calories come from carbohydrates most of which should be complex like your starches um, you know your whole grains your um, you know starchy fruits and vegetables potatoes aren't bad potatoes are great they're a great source of potassium they're a great source of fiber they're a great source of energy now this many potatoes yeah might be too much you know so look at serving sizes too <laughs> all right oh Catherine what would you recommend diet and nutrition wise for someone who's looking to lose weight but not sure where to start the first thing that you need to do is log your eating habits. A lot of us don't know what habits are leading us in the wrong direction until we actually take a look at them. So take three days and just kind of jot down what you ate, what time, and how you were feeling. Um, once you do that, then it's easy to identify where you want to make that first change. I never recommend making huge changes, a lot of changes all at once. I would recommend going through, picking out um, maybe the thing that's most important to you and then going from there. You also have to look at your goals and you want them to be smart. You want them to be specific. So if you just say, I wanna lose weight, well, that's not very specific. But if you say, I want to lose five pounds by May 1st, that's a specific goal. You want it to be measurable. So, you know, once again, if to just say, oh, I need to eat more fruits and vegetables, what does that mean? Does that mean you're gonna have two servings of fruits and two servings of vegetables every day? That's measurable. So you can measure that goal. You want it to be something that you can hold yourself accountable for. So 
if you're just gonna say, well, I'm gonna eat healthy, how are you accountable for that? You know, you, you kind of have to spell it out. Like, okay, I'm going to eat, um, you know, I'm going to make half my plate fruits and vegetables. I'm going to make sure I have lean proteins. You know, you can hold yourself more accountable for that. It also needs to be realistic, okay? Telling yourself that you are going to lose 10 pounds in a week by following a nut and berry diet, that's, that's not gonna be realistic for the general population or for most of us because it's, it, you, you set yourself up to fail in the sense that it's hard to follow and it's hard to maintain. So, you know, it's, it's like running a race. You have to put your shoes on before you can run that marathon. You need a good foundation and a good base. Um, Caitlin wants to know if we have website links to suggest for macronutrient. Um, what a really great website to check out um, is myplate.gov and that's on the USDA website. There's also a um, like body weight planner on there too where you can kind of fill in what, um, you know, what your current weight is, what your goal weight is, how you plan on changing your activity levels. So those are some really good tools. Um, and like I said, that's on USA.gov or myplate.gov. All right, um, I'm gonna make sure I've answered the questions that have come in. So, so back to the goal setting, Catherine, on where to start, that's where to start, right down Keep a three-day log of what you're doing and then kind of pick, pick pick the one that stands out to you the most so if you're looking and you're saying gosh i am not eating any fruits and vegetables make that your first goal and then that's all that has to be it doesn't have to be oh i'm going to exercise three times a week i'm going to do this those are all wonderful goals but add that on so maybe the first week you just work on more fruits and vegetables the second week okay i'm going to walk three days a week you know add it on so they're not drastic changes, but gradual lifestyle changes that eventually just become part of your daily habit. All right, hopefully that makes sense. All right, oh, this is a great one from Anna. Share some tips to get some extra vitamin D until the sun comes out in full force. Okay, well, I'm in Florida, so vitamin D is pretty good here, but um, so the relationship between sun and vitamin D is that when we take in vitamin D through our diet or through our supplements, um, it's not necessarily absorbed into the body like the, the full vitamin D. It has to be converted. It needs like that, that catalyst. It needs that middle factor to change it from its dietary form into its, you know, biological function. Um, kind of the same with beta carotene, vitamin A and beta carotene. Um, so the best way to convert vitamin D is sunlight. So we obviously in the north, um, especially this gray dreary winter we've had, um, and cold and wind, we do sometimes lack that vitamin D. So I, I know, you know, it's, it's always a good idea to talk with your physician about a vitamin D supplement, if that is something that works with your current medications, your health history and all that. Um, so um, I like to supplement with vitamin D. Making sure that your, your dairy products and stuff, like your milk has that vitamin A and D added back in. They're fat-based, so when we pull the fat out of our dairy products, those go with it, so they put them back in. So that's why when you see vitamin A and D added, they're added in. And then get outside even if just for a few minutes. You know, even if you have your hat and your coat and your scarf, get outside and, you know, get that fresh air, get some of that sunlight, you know, get that, it's gonna do wonders for you anyway to help with that. Um, so I, one of my daughters actually um, has a tendency to become vitamin D sufficient. So she, she takes a supplement and we, you know, I try to boot her outside every so often to make sure she gets some fresh air and, and a little bit of that sunlight. You know, with that being said, you know, I don't want any dermatologists in here getting upset with me. I'm talking about, you know, limiting your exposure cautiously, you know, using your sunscreen, things like that. 
but just you know getting outside and getting some of that healthy natural light is gonna make a difference all right workouts you can do with the mom obsessed baby oh Allie you need to go watch Sarah Vandenberg's live video from earlier today she had the cutest workout with her son Hudson who is I want to say going on three and um, it's there's so many things you can do wrap that baby up in a carrier carry your toddler around um, there's there's lots you can do and um, we can get together and post more um, tips for mom baby workouts but I would go back and watch um, Sarah's video all right Britt wants to know when she's bored at home she tends to snack any tips to slow the snacking or recommendations on healthy snacking for boredom eating this is one of the number one topics I was going to talk about if no one brought it up because we are all in that boat we're bored snacking we're bored cooking, we're bored baking, we're bored drinking, we're bored. <laughs> You're so bored. Um, and it is easy to think, okay, I um, want to, sorry, I was, okay, they just posted the link for the USDA or choosemyplate.gov, so awesome, thank you for that. Um, one of the things, that I like to do when I'm going to reach for that snack. The first thing I ask myself is, when was the last time I had like a glass of water? So sometimes we're thirsty and we take that as hunger. So I will, you know, drink a glass of water, maybe six to eight ounces of water, and then kind of reevaluate. Um, the other thing I think of is that satiety scale where 10 is really full, one is really starving, where are you at on that scale? If you just had a huge breakfast at 9 a.m. and you're like an eight out of a 10, and then at 9.30 you're reaching for a snack, chances are you're not hungry. You don't need that fuel. So you have to kind of train yourself to intuitively think, okay, do I need to nourish myself or am I just, am I, am I feeding my soul? Am I feeding my nerves? Am I feeding my fear? You know, what what am I feeding? Am I feeding for nourishment or am I feeding to fill something that's not being filled right now? And then work to find another way to fill that. Um, maybe go walk up and down your stairs five times. Maybe, you know, leave the room and go do, um, you know, another task. Or um, another thing you can do is Organize your pantry. Organize your pantry and your refrigerator. This is a great time. Get rid of, you'd be surprised, many of you, if you go check your spice cabinet, how many of those spices are actually expired. That means the freshness, freshness date is gone and they're not gonna be that flavorful and they're not gonna be that, add that much to your food anymore. But check your condiments, your salad dressings, your ketchup, your condiments, your stuff in your fridge. Get rid of all that stuff, clean your fridge out and take time to reorganize it. You know, we always throw all the vegetables in the crisper drawer. We can't see it there. Keep it right on the first shelf. So when you open it up, that third shelf in, that's where your yogurt is. That's where your carrot sticks are. That's where your fresh cut melon is. You know, keep it right there handy. For my kids, that bottom crisper drawer, that's the snack drawer. So when they want a snack, that's where I have my applesauce pouches, fruit cups, string cheese, um, yogurt, drinks, things like that, or in that bottom drawer. So when they're hungry, I'll tell them, okay, go get something out of the fridge drawer. And I know, you know, apple slices, packages of apple slices, you know, so I know whatever they pick out of that drawer, I'm gonna be okay with because that's that's their healthy snack drawer. Um, same in my cabinet, I have a, like a, a bag, a reusable shopping bag, and I fill that with, um, you know, goldfish snacks, you know, wheat thin single serving size um, snacks and so when they go to the cabinet they can just pick something out of that snack bag you know so do that for yourself have those healthy snacks readily available when you come from Costco or Walmart or wherever it is you were actually able to get what you wanted um, don't just leave it in the box that's super hard to get into open it up right away and put it in a bowl or a container where you can just reach and grab for it easily 
we want food, but we don't always want to work for it. You know, we don't want to cut up the stuff. We want to grab a cookie because it's right there and it's easy to get to. So make the easy food or make the healthier choices easier to get to. So, all right, next question. Oh, let's see, I had a couple on email too. Oh, I know a good one was um, baking with the kids. So, um, you know, if we're bored, our kids are bored. And um, when you are, you know, trying to think of activities, um, coming up with healthy snacks and stuff is actually a great activity and it's a great way to get the kids involved. Plus the kids are gonna be more likely to eat them if they're part of that. Um, smoothies are awesome. My kids love to make smoothies, but even baking, um, there's a lot you can put in muffins that's got a lot of nutrients to it. You could make homemade granola bars. You could take their favorite cereal and make kind of a um, sort of, you know, Rice Krispie treat or something out of their favorite cereal. There's lots of different options to do there um, when, it, when it comes to baking. So, and, and you're teaching them a great skill as well. Okay, um, do you cut your vegetables when you get them from the store? I do, actually, I really try. Um, I will order um, bags of vegetables, you know, like baby carrots, sugar snap peas, you know, maybe bag of baby spinach, stuff like that. What happens when we keep it in the bag, it actually will go bad a little quicker. Um, so I have containers, I have, you know, nice Tupperware containers that I'll open that stuff and put it in. You know, I wash and slice my strawberries right away. Um, I, I will keep my apples and oranges out on the counter in a bowl because then the kids will reach for them. If they're in the fridge, kind of like out of sight, out of mind. But if they're right there, it's easy to just grab one as you walk by. So like things that are, you know, shelf stable fruits and vegetables, your apples, your oranges, your bananas, things like that. Just keep them right out on your counter on a bowl and they're gonna be a lot easier to access. Um, like I said, other things, don't shove them in the crisper drawer. Use that crisper drawer for your for other things. Um, keep them out ready so that's the first thing you see when you open the fridge. Um, same with those salad packs. I'll buy the salad pack and I'll open it, take it out of the bag right away and put it in a container, but I won't put the dressing on it right away. That way when I'm cooking or if I need a quick lunch or something like that I just grab the container and then I can just add the dressing on it right there so taking moments to prep your food ahead of time does actually save you in the long run and and the benefit of doing this now is that we have the time <laughs> we, we're not on the go as a society I think we don't know what to do when we don't have something to do you know it's like the more you have to do the more you get done the less you have to do the less you get done it's it's, it's a driving force, so don't let those, you know, healthy habits slide. Um, what other questions do we have? I um, really think one of the other problems that we're kind of encountering right now is not always being able to get the foods we want to get. Um, and with, on the opposite of that are we may have foods we have that we aren't gonna eat and they're just taking up space in our pantry. That's why this is a wonderful time to clean out our pantry. What I've seen some places doing, which I think is such a good idea, is those um, boxes that people use for books, like take a book, leave a book, a lot of places are starting to do that with their shelf stable items, their canned goods. Um, you know, take what you need, leave what you don't, so you can, you know, maybe I have a leftover can of black beans and no one in my family eats black beans. Maybe I can leave my black beans and take someone else's green beans or something like that. So use what you have in your pantry and get creative. It's, it's funny, you know, we've had such access to food that it's never been an issue here in the U.S. for us to not have it a majority of us so when we're all of a sudden like what do you mean there's no eggs or what do you mean I can only buy one gallon of milk it's you know something to think about and really be 
cautious, you know, of how you're using it. So, and conscientious of it and sharing what you don't need. The food bank needs food so bad right now. So as you're cleaning out and organizing things, you know, take, you know, set some stuff aside. I know, I think Hornbacher's has a drop off point. I think you can take it right to the food bank. I'm sure the Y would be more than happy to come up with some, you know, some links or some resources or maybe even a drop off point um, you know, we can check with them and see how we could help get some of the food items we have on hand that don't need into the hands of people that do need them. So, um, but like I said, um, there's lots of different options out there. Um, let's see, what else? I'm trying to think if there's any other topics. I'm going to check real quick. Like I said, I had a couple questions on email. But hopefully, we are, okay, um, oh, specific days of week to shop at the grocery store. <sighs> That's a tough one to answer right now. Um, the best thing I can, Obviously, the best time to shop at the store is right after the delivery trucks come, but we don't know usually when that is unless you are really familiar with our um, with, with your store. You know, you can always ask the manager, like, you know, when what day does your produce come in, and then make sure you go to the door, at the store the next day. Um, you can also usually guarantee that Sundays are going to be well stocked because that's the big coupon day. That's when the form has all their big coupons. So that's usually a good day to hit up the grocery store. Um, if you're looking, you know, to shop on a budget and save some money there. Um, other than that, you know, first thing in the morning is good because if the truck came overnight, um, it, it kind of varies. I know where we're at now, there's a Winn-Dixie just down the road and they restock their shelves at eight o'clock at night. So going at seven o'clock at night, you're not gonna find a whole lot. So if you get there right away, so you know, but every store is different. So when it comes to getting those items you need, you know, check with your grocer, you know, check with you. I know we're doing the social distancing, but you know, ch check with your neighbors. Maybe your neighborhood could do a, um, a little, you know, mini food drive for each other, you know, and you could just leave packages on each other's doorsteps, you know, or set up a little Facebook page or something for your neighborhood and say, hey, you know, I have this, this, and this, who wants it? And, and we, can, we can still help each other out while maintaining those social distancing guidelines. So, but anyway, all right, I'm gonna stay on for a few more minutes just to see if there's any other questions um, I really encourage everybody to s keep eating healthy make sure you're eating enough make sure that you're eating you know lots of fruits and vegetables make sure you're getting rest make sure you're drinking enough water make sure you're you know doing what you can to stay active and you know taking a few moments just to kind of clear your mind every day and understand that you know we're all in this together as a community we have such a great community with Fargo Moorhead and it's it's just really tough but you know we need to just continue being kind to each other and kind to ourselves and I know we've heard this over and over again but this too will pass and you know here at the YMCA, we are here for you and we have always been and will continue to be here for you. Um, Caitlin wants to know if there's specific foods to assist with immunity. The rainbow, right? So um, fresh fruits and vegetables, frozen fruits and vegetables are great sources. The, the brighter the color, the better the nutrient. Um, they chock full of those antioxidants. They are full of great, you know, you know, fiber, which helps digestion and helps 
you know, moving things along, <laughs> kind of a natural detox. Um, I see one more question from Chance on what's my opinion on fructose. Well, being that fructose is the naturally occurring sugar in fruit, I'm a fan because fruit is one of my favorite foods. Um, fruit is, you know, high in vitamin C, it's got a high water content, it's very satisfying, it's high in fiber. You take those bright colored fruits, you know, your, your berries, your, you know, your citrus fruits, you know, vitamin C is huge right now. So in that form, amazing. As far as fructose added to things to sweeten them, it depends on what the item is and why it needs to be sweetened. Um, a lot of companies will add fructose to things because they've taken the fat out, so they need to give it more flavor. If that's the case, maybe it's better just to buy the regular version and have a little bit less. Um, you know, fruit is fructose is used to sweeten most our sweetened beverages and candies and things like that because it is such an easy sweet sugar to get a hold of. You know, like high fructose corn syrup and things like that. So fructose itself is not a bad thing. It's a matter of how much you have and where you get it. A tablespoon of high fructose corn syrup is gonna have way more calories and way more simple sugar than an apple. Even though it's typically the same kind of sugar, you're gonna get way more nutrition out of that apple than you would out of that you know, teaspoon of corn syrup that's been added to your cereal or added to your granola bar or whatever it is. So you just have to look at it um, in terms of, of ratio of, you know, nutrient density and things like that. So anyway, okay, well, this has been amazing. I hope you've learned something. Um, you know, continue to watch this page. We're gonna have great content for you as long as we need to keep you healthy and active and caring for yourselves. So um, I am more than happy to um, answer any more questions that come in. I can just pop on and answer right to this link. We will save this link so you can come back and refer to it or share it with your friends and family or anyone that you think would um, benefit from the information and take care. So thank you so much.